Alright, welcome back Team Forever, my WWE fans. I wasn't going to do this video at first because I know it's late as ever. And my WWE videos, like a lot of people don't really watch them. But I wanted to do the video, so I said, you know what, I'm going to just do it anyway. And if people watch it, they watch it. But if they don't, oh well, I just really want to do this video. So as y'all can tell by the title of this video, I'm about to be talking about WWE and the year, and NXT, WWE and NXT. The year 2018 and giving out some of these awards, which most of them went to NXT. So, but let's get started with this video because I want this video to be done in 20 minutes or less. So, and I always ramble, so it's probably not going to happen. But we're going to start things off with the theme song of the year. First of all, I just want to say 2018 was an okay year. I think it was a good year for NXT because, like, NXT has some, uh, like, a little a little period where it had got kind of down because like during the brand split when everybody left Samoa Joe, Finn Balor, Nakamura, like all of them had left um, NXT was like when, when it was like the Bobby Roode era or was he with in Nakamura? This is why I ramble <laughs> anyway but 2018 was a good year for NXT and it was a Ugh. <laughs> it was a rough year for WWE Raw. WWE SmackDown had its ups and its down. WWE SmackDown was like a, a roller coaster. But starting things off with the theme song of the year. Now I'm supposed to pick a theme song that's new that debuted in 2018, and it's not that many that came out. The ones that I can think of that I like a lot. Well, the only one I can think of that was new was Ronda Rousey's at first. But then I do a little bit more research, and I found out Drew McIntyre got a new theme this year. Listen to his old theme from 2017 and listen to it in 2018. It is a different theme song. Go back and listen. Um, also, Nakamura. I don't know how I forgot about him, but he got a new theme song, which is... I really like his theme song, his heel theme song. They, I like the reason why they gave it to him because of his little... They didn't want the fans to sing his theme song now that he's a heel. So I really like that. Um, but I gave theme song of the year to Ronda Rousey. I think it's a bad theme song, and when she comes out, like, you know. Well, then again, Ronda sometimes comes out with a smile. She sometimes, sometimes comes out like she's ready for business. But either way, I think her theme song is the best one. It fits her really, really well. I like when she debuted, and I like her WrestleMania entrance. I think her music fits her a lot. Most Improved. I was split between two people. Number one, from... Uh, NXT, Bianca Belair, she's improved a lot because I remember watching her in the Mae Young Classic and nobody thought she was going to win, nobody, you know, didn't think she was nothing special and now on NXT, like, not even the way she's presented because she's presented as undefeated, or however she say it but her, how she is, like, she's got a good, like, she feels like she's comfortable in the ring and outside the ring, like with her character. So I feel like she definitely improved. Because watch her Mae Young Classic first match, she doesn't look that comfortable as she does now. And also Elias. I feel like Elias is like super improved. Even though I thought he was good already, I feel like he's even better now. And I like him as a as a face, which I didn't think he would be able to pull off. Like, I think Elias, he he's due. He's overdue for a title, I think. No matter if it's U.S., I.C., Universal, or WWE, or Tag Team. Um, next up, we got Most Overrated. Now, honestly, y'all might, or whoever watches this, y'all might disagree with me with this, but I picked Dolph Ziggler. I'm sorry. Like, I didn't think I would pick Dolph Ziggler for Most Overrated ever. Like, a few years ago, he always got Most Underrated. But now, like, with the roster looking like it does with Finn Balor, Nakamura, Freaking Samoa Joe, even Leo Rush. And Dolph Ziggler is still being featured in all these big matches. He main evented a pay-per-view this year. And, like, in the beginning of the year, wasn't he on his way out the door? Like, they gave him the number 30 entrance inside the Royal Rumble just for him to get thrown right out. Like, I feel like I'm I'm done with the Dolph Ziggler train. Like, everybody loved Dolph Ziggler. Used to call him over underrated. And I was just like, yeah, you were underrated back then. But now, like, no. You you don't need these big spots. Because, like, at the end of the day, I wish he didn't re-sign that contract. Because he has not done anything. I mean, he has done stuff, but it's like, it's still not anything if that makes sense but like he was with drew mcintyre but drew mcintyre was the standout not him 
So, at this point, Dolph Ziggler is overrated. Like, he don't need to be inside these big feature matches. When you got somebody like Andrade, who wasn't featured in 2018, but Dolph Ziggler was. Like, I don't understand that. Or Leo Rush, even. I mean, I know that they have roles, but they weren't seen as much as Dolph Ziggler. Or Finn Balor wasn't even seen as much as Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler ran the the pay-per-views this year. He came out number 30 in the Rumble. And he just, I feel like Dolph Ziggler, no. I'm ready for him to go. And then we go to most underrated, which I gave to Finn Balor. And I know that I'm doing this video late, so obviously now he's about the main event Royal Rumble. He's inside a match with, Dolph, with Brock Lesnar finally. But talking about 2018, he was definitely underrated because I can't remember a few of relevance that he was in. So don't tell me about Baron Corbin's feud. Don't tell me about even the Seth Rollins feud because the Seth Rollins one don't even really count as a feud. They didn't even really feud. They just had a match. <laughs> and then the Miz, Baron Corbin, those don't count because they weren't relevant. Um, Finn Balor has not had a, a relevant feud since Bray Wyatt, I would say. And most people didn't even like the Bray Wyatt feud. So Finn Balor was the most underrated 2018 face of the year. I give it to Aleister Black because, to me, he gets the biggest, out of all faces, to me, he gets the biggest applause. And he... Like, he just, he seems like the best baby face. I will go give it to Johnny Gargano, which I probably, probably still should have because he's so sympathetic. But then, also, Aleister Black was, too. And he got taken out by Johnny Gargano, so. Yeah, if you watch NXT, I think you would agree that he's the biggest face on NXT. And in the main roster, I couldn't really think of nobody, so I just gave it to, to um, Aleister Black because he's the biggest face in NXT. And then speaking of NXT, the heel of the year, definitely Tommaso Ciampa. Um, he just doesn't care. He's not trying to be pretty. He's not trying to be cool. He's not trying to be sweet. He is just, he doesn't care. He's taking, he's yelling at old ladies. He's taking stuff from fans. He's, he's not, his moves look nasty. Like uh, somebody like Sheamus. Like, his, he is the only person I feel like matches Sheamus when it comes to nasty-looking moves. Like, his moves just look like they're painful. They look stiff as ever. His knees, like, Tommaso, and then, like, his beard, and he's letting it go gray, and it's not shade. Like, he just, he's, uh, Tommaso Ciampa was, and then he was taking out, like, our favorite baby faces, Johnny Gargano, Aleister Black. So, yeah, and then he had no music for a while. Tommaso Ciampa was healed this year, 2018, for sure. Speaking of Tommaso Ciampa, feud of the year, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa, for sure, nothing even came close. They feuded for almost the entire year. Are they still feuding right now? I think the only, they had a, yeah, they feuded for like four takeovers straight, and I think it's five takeovers in a year. So, yeah, Gargano and Ciampa, for sure. Or maybe they feuded for three takeovers. I'm not sure. They did Chicago, Brooklyn, New Orleans. They didn't do Philly. And the other one is War Games. Did they fight at War Games? Nope, they didn't fight at War Games. So it was three. It was three. They did three takeovers. Okay. Mark out moment of the year. Definitely for me, Daniel Bryan returning. When he, when he was in the ring and Owens and Zayn came out, I don't remember exactly what happened, but either way, they attacked him. And when he fought back, and then you start seeing him do his signature Daniel Bryan kicks in the corner, and then his drop kicks to the corner, I was go. I, I never smiled that big. It was live. Oh, my God. Like, Daniel Bryan is back. And then you hear the whole crowd chanting, yes. I don't remember if he hit the knee or not, but it was that was a mark out moment. Like. That was that was great. And that was me watching on TV. I remember last time I gave Shane McMahon a return because I was there in the crowd and that happened. This, I was going just as crazy and I was watching on TV. Tag Team of the Year. Now, I, this was kind of hard because Tag Team... <sighs> Raw's Tag Team division sucked, by the way. Let, just go back, look on Wikipedia, and look at Raw's Tag Team Championship history for this year, or for 2018. Wow, it was horrible. So I went to SmackDown, and then I, then I went to NXT, and it's just like it's only Undisputed Era that can even argue for getting that title, this title. And then I go to SmackDown, it's like Usos, The Bar, or um, New Day. 
And I was thinking, I was thinking, I was thinking, because these are like the three tag teams that pretty, pretty much ran 2018. And I actually gave it to the New Day, because I think that, oh, and I guess the Bludgeon Brothers. But I feel like the New Day were featured inside big matches at SummerSlam, WrestleMania. Um, they had a lot of um, mic time. They, I just, I feel like, and then they had matches good with Usos and with The Bar, as well as the Bludgeon Brothers. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I feel like it's the new day this year. Um, yeah, not really much to say. I guess it's an argument for any of them, though. I guess if anybody picked the Usos, it, of course I'm not gonna argue with them picking the Usos. But I feel like the new day had a better a better um they had a better year this year than the Usos. The Usos lost the titles to the Bludgeon Brothers. The New Day won them from the Bludgeon Brothers. So yeah. And then also, they had a few, oh, Sanity, they had a few with Sanity, like, uh, New Day were having better matches this year, I say. But the new, but Usos were having good matches, too, like, it's an argument for either one. I, I'm not arguing with none of them. Uh, best on mic, going back again, I gave it to Tommaso Ciampa, like, I just, I like the not caring attitude, like, he just says what he wants, he doesn't, like, and then at some points, not gonna lie, like in the beginning of the year when he first came back, I I was rewinding fast forward in NXT when he would just come out and stand there, because me watching on the network, I'm not gonna just stay, watch him stand there and say nothing for like ten minutes. But like the fact that he could even stand there and do that, like you, I feel like he's the best on mic. I really do. And then like of course like it would have to be a a, a manager. Like I thought about giving it to Zelina Vega. Paul Heyman, I feel like, didn't really do much this year on the mic. I can't really remember that many Brock feuds other than Reigns. Did Brock really feud for Rain with Reigns the entire year? When did Reigns leave? September? I can't remember a thing that Paul Heyman said all year. I really can't. Um, Did Brock wrestle at the Royal Rumble? Because Reigns was in the Royal Rumble. I don't remember a thing. Oh, he did. He fought with Bro with Strowman. So okay, he did feud with Strowman. All right, Strowman and Kane at Royal Rumble. No. All right. Um, next is promo of the year. Definitely, I picked Daniel Bryan. Fight for your dreams. That's pretty much the only promo that I can really remember that I really really liked. Also, can remember the Roman Reigns one, but I'm not gonna give that promo of the year because it wasn't really a promo. Um, y'all know which one I'm talking about. Uh, Cruiser Rated of the Year, Mustafa Ali, and I'm not just giving that to him because of what he's doing this year and what he did at the end of last year with all coming up to SmackDown, but I was paying attention to Mustafa Ali when Enzo was still around in 2018, and then I liked his WrestleMania match, I liked his gear, I seen him live at um, Evolve Wrestling, I liked his gear, he had a good match there, I feel like he's relatable, um, if you watch the YouTube uh, thing they did on him. Uh, I like his finisher. I feel like his matches are all good. I feel like he's a great baby face in the ring. He sells really good. I like Mustafa Ali. And I liked him for a while. So I give him and I'm glad he moved up to um to to the main rock to SmackDown. That's another one. Like going back to D Dolph Ziggler being the most overrated, think about Cedric Alexander is not even on the main roster. Like Jack Gallagher like, these people are better than Ziggler at this point. Like, Ziggler's, like, okay. Uh, commentator of the year. I was torn between Mauro Ronaldo, however you say his name, and Nigel McGuinness. Argument for both of them. I won with Mauro. I just did. I had Nigel written down, but I scratched it out and won with Mauro. I feel like, I don't know. Um, show of the year. I won with NXT TakeOver New Orleans. That's the one right before WrestleMania. All good matches. I can watch that show again. I can watch that show five times this year and never be bored of it. Um, that show had the North American ladder match. Great. Shayna Baszler, Ember Moon. Great. Uh, Alistair Black, Johnny... Uh, Alistair Black, Andrade Cien Almas. Great. Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa. Great. Like, what? All good matches on that show. And that's not even all of them. Um, finisher of the year, I gave it to Drew McIntyre's Claymore kick. He, 
I love the way he does that move. Like I can watch that move over and over again when he do it. The sound, the slap you hear on it. He he's so tall and big and lengthy, and you just see how he just floats through the air with it. His neck goes back, and his leg like he just kicks the heck out of people's face. I love that move. Um, technically the finisher of the year is supposed to be a finisher that came out this year, so I guess it would be I would kind of say like Ronda Rousey's armbar because when she locks that in, and it's it's fun to see when she's about to lock it in because people fight hard not to get locked in that. Um, and then the worst finisher of the year. This didn't come out this year, but I'm giving it to it anyway. And I'll probably give Worst Finisher this move every single year until it's no longer her finisher. Bailey's belly to Bailey. Worst finisher. <laughs> I never noticed how bad it was. was. My cousin would always say it like back in the day, but I never noticed how horrible it is until this year. Like all she does, if you even take away that it's a belly to belly suplex that many people do, Shayna Baszler does it all the time, and hers look way worse than Bailey's, and she'd never get a three count or even a two count from it. But she takes you and she picks you up and she puts you back down. Like your feet, they don't even come up past her knees. She just your feet just come off the ground and then just go back down. She doesn't even do a nice little spin with it. Not that that would do anything, but at least it'll look better. Um. Manager of the year, I gave it to Zelina Vega. Go look at those takeovers. Go look at takeover Philadelphia. Go look at takeover um, New Orleans. And even look at the takeover where Andrade beat McIntyre last year. She, she's, she's the best. I feel like she's the best. Um, shout out to Leo Rush. I think he's really, really good. It's really funny. Um, shout out to Paul Heyman because the only reason why I'm not giving it to Paul Heyman is because he wasn't around that much this year. Like, Brock, I don't really remember much about Brock this year, to be honest. Like, I don't, the Universal title might as well not be a title, because it's never there. Um, GM of the year, I was torn between Kurt Angle and uh, Paige. I wasn't going to give it to, um, I wasn't going to give it to Dan Bryant, because I just feel like he wasn't GM that long this year. Was he even? Yeah, he was GM for like two months this year. I ended up giving it to Kurt Angle, because... I feel like he had a match at, like, I feel like he fought for what was right when he was GM. He went against the authority. He made matches. Like, like, Paige was good, too, but I feel like she was a little bit biased. And I can never forget when she told Samoa Joe that that was the most horrible thing she ever seen on SmackDown. And then we saw what actually happened. When he was about to go into AJ Styles' house, and showing off and then the next week she said that was the most horrible thing she had ever seen and she suspended Samoa Joe I think and then we saw the footage and all that happened was the police came and I'm like Paige that was the most horrible thing you ever seen and you just suspended him for that I know this is WWE but you're supposed to just think that this is like no it was just too bad for me so I gave it to Kurt Angle uh, most disappointing match AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura, going into, at WrestleMania, going into the match, I had a feeling it wasn't going to be that good because they kept hyping it as a dream match. WWE did. And whenever WWE hyped something, they just kept saying, like, you don't keep dreaming something, promoting something like that. You just let it happen. Like, look what just happened on SmackDown. Andrade and Rey Mysterio is a dream match, but they didn't hype it as that. It just happened. And then the match was... Oh my god. I'm probably going to watch that match again. Uh, match of the year, I gave it to Johnny Gargano versus, not Tommaso Ciampa, Johnny Gargano versus Andrade Cien Almas from NXT TakeOver Philadelphia for the NXT World Championship. That match, I can watch. That's my favorite match of the whole year, and I think it was the best match. Um, second place, I would actually give it to Johnny Gargano, or not Johnny Gargano, but Andrade Cien Almas versus Aleister Black from NXT TakeOver New Orleans. Andrade has some good matches this year. Andrade and Zelina are so underrated. I didn't get him most underrated because I feel like Finn Balor's been there longer. Andrade, I feel like he can still get, you know, it, that was his first year, so I give him, you know. But Andrade, he the man. That's my boy. And so is Zelina. That's my girl. Um, female superstar of the year, I give it to Ronda Rousey. I really, really, 
really wanted to give this to Shayna Baszler, but I just feel like it wouldn't be fair. I just like Shayna Baszler so much, and I know a lot of people do. She is just so good. Shayna Baszler is... But she just didn't have that many good matches as Ronda Rousey, but Ronda Rousey didn't have that many either. It's just her WrestleMania match was so good, and Shayna Baszler didn't have one that was even close, so... I got to give it to Ronda Rousey. And Ronda Rousey is good. She took that beat in from Charlotte. Like, Ronda Rousey. She's great. And Ronda Rousey had, like, a real good match with Nia Jax, too. Like, Nia Jax, I could give her the most overrated. I like Nia Jax, though, but she was overrated this year. Male super. Oh, and also female superstar of the year. If a lot of people give it to Becky Lynch, I completely disagree with y'all. Becky Lynch did not. As much as we like Becky Lynch, she didn't really stand out and start doing stuff until fall. Like Charlotte was doing stuff from the beginning of the year. So Charlotte is above Becky for 2018 in my book. So everybody that gave Becky Lynch the female superstar of the year 2018 completely disagree with y'all. Completely disagree with y'all. It would be Ronda Rousey, Charlotte, Shayna Baszler, then Becky, I guess. Yeah. Um, male superstar of the year. This was hard, but I I gave it to AJ Styles. I there was a lot of people that I wanted to put above AJ because I don't think AJ was necessarily a good champion. But he was the champion all year, almost for the entire year. And even if I didn't like some of his feuds, even if I didn't like some of his matches, he held SmackDown down for a long time. He really did. And his promos, they're not bad. Like, people talk about how AJ's not that good on Mike. He proved this year that he can be good on Mike. And he... Like, his feuds were not good. Like, I'm, like he feuded with good people. He feuded with Samoa Joe and Nakamura. And both feuds were not good. So, that's why it's like, I want to get this to Aleister Black. Aleister Black is the superstar of the year. He had all good matches. I want to give it to Tommaso Ciampa. He's the superstar of the year. He had all good matches. All good storylines. Johnny Gargano. Good storylines. Tommaso Ciampa had good feuds. Johnny Gargano had good storylines. And Aleister Black had good matches. Daniel Bryan had a great story. Great all of that comeback. But AJ Styles held down a whole show. He held down the whole show. Tommaso Ciampa had other people to lean back on. Aleister Black. Tommaso Ciampa had Johnny Gargano. AJ Styles held down that show by itself. And did AJ go against... Oh, no. I was about to say, did AJ go against... um? Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series, but he didn't. I think AJ had, like, the most matches this year. I completely just made that up. I have no clue if he did. <laughs> but male superstar of the year, I'm giving it to AJ Styles. Superstar to look out for in 2019. I guess all of them, to be honest, because you never know what's going to happen. Also, I almost gave most overrated to Braun Strowman. I didn't talk about him at all pretty much in this review. Because, just because of what happened at the Elimination Chamber, if y'all don't remember the Elimination Chamber from last year, go back and watch it. That was when he took a finisher from everybody like five times and he still kicked out. Then he took a couple spears and he didn't kick out. Then he destroyed, he destroyed the whole tag team division throughout the year. He's flipping over cars every chance he gets. But he didn't, he hasn't won a title. He won the tag team title, then gave it up. Why not just had kept it? And I didn't mention Seth Rollins throughout this whole review either. He had a good year match-wise, but, I mean, anybody that give him superstar of the year, no. No. He had good matches, but, and he was a good IC champion, but, <laughs> what can I say? His, he had good matches with Dolph Ziggler, and Dolph Ziggler, and Dolph Ziggler. And Dolph Ziggler, and I know he had some other matches, but his like I feel like he was like just stuck fighting Dolph Ziggler for a long time. So. But that's it for this video, y'all. I'm gonna leave the list that I just did inside the comments down below, and y'all can just comment y'all answers and tell me what y'all thought about mines. Until next time, catch y'all later.